welcome back to The Big Build. I'm Robin Clevett and in this part of fitting the staircase here at The Big Build, we have got the simple job to start cleaning off some of the dowels. These are the drawer dowels that go through the mortises and hold everything nicely together. We're also going to put some wall fixings in as well. Now this is quite an important part of a, a fitting of a staircase as you could imagine because it needs to be super solid. Now I've mentioned in a previous video or an earlier video about the fact that in this case we've plastered the walls and then we've fitted the staircase in. That's because it's oak and if you, if you do it the other way around you put the stairs in first, they generally come in unfinished, then you plaster, there's a lot of moisture, there's a lot of mess, there's a lot of preparation to do in taping it all up and I think that actually you do, don't gain anything really, providing you make your opening perfectly square parallel and flat like we've done here, you can fix a piece of joinery like this straight back against the wall. Now talking of fixings, I've got a chosen or preferred fixing that I like to use for a staircase like this. Now these are actually a concrete screw which all they require, because we're making uh, fixing into masonry, all they require is a six millimeter masonry hole. So um, not a super bashed out one with a uh, sort of a hammer drill, just a nice gentle six mil hole. And because they're a through fixing, which means they're the same thickness all the way through, they'll bite into the string, they'll bite into the masonry beyond. And even if you don't get a superb fixing pulling backwards, they're gonna act like a pin. So you've got it in the masonry here, for example, you've got it through the string here and it's gonna act like a pin because all the force in the stair is generally coming straight downwards. So my advice is put more fixings in the less, so what I'll be doing is going in between each one of the treads here, here, not there, because I've got pipes running up the back, but I'll be there, I'll be here, I'll be here, and around the underside of the landing. So what we do is, because we like to leave the underside of the stairs on show, I'm gonna be pelleting the holes. So the first job with any pellet is to put a pilot through, this is just a sort of a, four or five mil pilot hole all the way through the string. Then we use a really sharp 12 mil, in this case I'm using an auger bit, and the reason why I pilot it is so that the worm or the screw doesn't carry on pulling the auger bit through because we generally use these in like a powered drill. When I was an apprentice, we'd use these in a bit and brace basically, so you could control it. But even a drill on low speed, if you haven't got a pilot, we'll keep pulling this through. But you mustn't make the pilot any bigger than the worm because what it will do, it will rattle around and you'll get a really untidy hole. So the whole benefit of these is it's got a scribe and a chisel, it cuts it beautifully and perfectly. Then masonry hole through, give it a clean, fix the fixing back in, we'll take you through that. And then we're gonna use a cross grain pellet, which means that these are cut through the grain and they're not like a dowel, which is along the grain if you like. So what we do is we glue those in and we choose the grain that matches as close to the grain as the hole either side. We tap them home, we let them go off and then we clean them back. So the first job I'm gonna do is show you how we clean these dowels off. Now, so you can use a handsaw, but what you wanna avoid is scratching any of the newels. If it's softwood, it's gonna be painted, it's a little bit more forgiving, but this is oak. So. You can either use a standard handsaw, put something between it, even a piece of card, but the more that you've got these sticking out, the more you've got to clean off. Or you can use a multi-tool because the blade is dead flat and you can literally start it off here. I'll just do this one. And you can take it back. Now, then, once you've taken it back, you might want to use a small plane or a chisel. And you'll then just clean up any excess with the plane. And then you might finish that off with a rub down, but you'd get all four done first. So if we do a close up of that, and then we'll do some drilling on that string and show you how we fix them. So I'm gonna do it two ways. First of all, I'll do it by hand. So I'm literally gonna get as close as I physically can without marking, obviously, the newel. We'll set that off. And then just go nice and easy as you come through because you don't want to split or break 
Now these oak dowels are fairly hard, so what you want to do is make sure that you don't, you, you take off the maximum you can get off, because cleaning them back is a struggle, even with a really sharp plane, you know, you've got to really do some work on them. And also keep an eye on them because if you've got too much off as you're planing, they break and they can break further back in than the hole. So here we go, we just clean those back. And we want to just go nice and steady. You, you can feel when you're, you're there. There's a little tiny bit more on this one here. And then, what we can do then is use the multi-tool on this side. So obviously I might just ease the speed down a bit on this. We'll start nice and flat. I'm just gonna lean it off a tiny bit. You can obviously see that's a lot quicker and a bit better. You just need a really good blade and then the same again. I've got my plane set really, really fine and super sharp. And once you're at that stage, using a sander, get the dust extraction on it as I'm so close and I haven't got a mask on. And there we have a nice finish. Now, with the sander, I'm not trying to use a really, really fine paper because this has been sort of sanded. I wouldn't say this is any more than about 120. Because if you sand locally and you keep sanding, when you put the oil or a finish on, you can see the difference. So you want to sand it in and out. You want to take it up a bit and down a bit or even just quickly whiz over the whole face of the newels. So that's how we did it before. Now, some years ago, when I was an apprentice, let me just try and get this to be plugged up here. We used to use a chisel as well. Much easier with softwood dowels, really not so easy with hardwood dowels. So the same rule would apply, you know, you'd, you'd set out by to take off a little bit of the dowel. So I'll leave a little bit more on. Now with a sharp chisel, for example, and a hammer or a mallet, I've got a rubber hammer here. So basically you can just go all the way around it. Just put a little seam all the way around it like this. And then you can just carefully pair it back but this is a little bit more risky because you could quite easily tap it too hard and touch the newel. But softwood, softwood dowels are much easier to clean off than the oak ones here. But you can see that once you've gone around the edge, you can take them in with a chisel and pair them back as well. So, come this way now. Working in. And you can see that the chisel will follow the, the newel as well nicely. So then you can actually use the chisel on the flat and just ease, ease it off and polish it up like that. I always say as a carpenter, we use blades, not paper. This is a classic example. And then you can just use the flat of the chisel to make it super, super smooth. But this is probably the most difficult way of doing it. 
but you can see how nice and shiny that is. Tiny little rub up. So that's basically how we go around doing our dowels. You can see that I've done a few over here. There's dowels everywhere on a staircase like this. There's lots of joints, lots of mortises and tenons. So I'm gonna fix the string through underneath the stairs. Now, because we leave the stairs open quite a lot of the time, especially in the cupboard like this, um, and we don't have fire regulation issues because we're only uh, a one more story up on top of here, I'm gonna fix them through here and I'm gonna avoid here, I've got some pipes, so I won't put a fixing here. I've got some cables here, but they travel up there, so I could probably get one in there, no problem. So I'm gonna fix it here, 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 and against the top there. Now, I know it doesn't really matter, but what I wanna do is I wanna get the same, the fixing in the same point. So I've just got a small square piece of material. I'm gonna pop a pilot hole through that. I'll just use that every time to mark it. So I want one here. I want one just here. So I'm not putting pencil marks anywhere and I can get them all exactly the same. So I want to make a pilot hole through the string. And the reason why I make a pilot hole is purely so my auger bit doesn't race through the work because we only need this to go in about a third of the thickness of the string so a counter bore so that it hides the head of the fixing keep the drill on fairly low speed for this and then the pilot will obviously keep us nice and straight and also it's not pulling me in and keeping me pulled through Let's go again. Perfect amount. Let's do the lower ones. Then what I want to do is drill those out six mil, but I'm going to go through the timber for the timber bit first because the masonry bit will skate around, jump around, and could damage the holes. So let's put this through first. Well, that's good timing. We've got a delivery now. Stairbox are bringing the glass for the balustrades, which will enable us to get the handrails in at some point as well. Let's go and get that unloaded quickly. So I'm just using a six millimeter. These are a 7.5. I'm using a six millimeter drill through my pilot hole, obviously. carefully turn these in. What you don't want to do is over tighten these, but the good thing is they are gripping everything. They're going to grip this and it's going to basically bite through everything and hold everything nice and secure. Even if you've got a little bit of packing here, you don't want to pull it all up too tight. an absolutely lovely fixing. So to fill the holes, we actually use a cross grain pellet, which actually means that they're, they're actually through the grain. So it's in exactly the same fashion as that. And what we actually do is we line up the grain with the grain and we glue these in, we tap them in, glue them in, and then we clean them off afterwards. So I'll just give you that. So what I like to do sometimes is reduce the bottom 
so they're a little bit tighter. So I'll take a little bit off the bottom of these. Now we get a whole box and sometimes, you know, you can pair them back really easily like this one here. It will just clean back and I'm just taking a little bit off so it doesn't hit my fixing just off the end there. Then I'll use a spot of glue. We want to pop a bit of glue on it and the idea is that that glue as we put it in we want to keep an eye on the grain which way the grain is going we just want to turn that right around the hole so the grain is on is going this way obviously the same as the stringer and we just give that little tap doesn't need a lot even with the end of a chisel and we'll leave that to go off let's get the next one done so we'll take another pellet off there There we go. And that one will go in here. So a bit of glue on that one. Let's try and dry first. Make sure that you've got enough off to miss, miss your fixing. Here we go. A little bit of glue. Line it all up. Get the grain in the right direction. Perfect. Give that a little tap. Use this now. Let that go off. To clean them off, obviously, you just start by knocking it back. Now, as you knock it off first, you'll see if it breaks the wrong way. If it does, turn the chisel around and clean it off the other way. But this is all right. Let's break it in the right direction. And then you can basically just work it back. As long as it's gone off and it's nice and tight, then that'll be absolutely perfect. And you want to take it so far, and then we can clean that off with a small plane. Oh. A little bit of a sand up. So that's how we clean back the dowels. These are dowels and we also clean and put in a pellet, if you like, to conceal the fixings. So a lot of people might watch this and think, why bother going to that trouble underneath a staircase? Because I think to myself, it doesn't take much longer to glue a pellet in. And once you open the cupboard underneath, you can look at it, it's all gonna look absolutely perfect. Thanks for joining me on my channel. See you all again soon. Mm -hmm.